Hi and welcome back to Paul Combs on Construction. This is the moment that certainly I've been waiting for. I hope you've been waiting for it too. Uh, it's the first interview um, that I've held with an industry uh, practitioner. Um, I've talked in earlier videos about the role of the client and, and how they should take the lead. That's a, a key theme really in um, the farmer review of the industry's labour model uh, in the UK. Um, but it, it spills over into all aspects of construction. The client really sets the scene um, for how their projects are going to be delivered. So um, today I'm going to be talking to uh, Gabriella Riddick. She, she works for a major pharmaceutical company in a project management uh, related role. Uh, and so rather than uh, me talking to camera, as I promised, here's the opinion of someone else. You're my first guest. Great. Oh. <laughs> you know, first choice, first subject. Um, maybe not so great as I'm learning all the time about how to create these uh, videos and how to conduct interviews. So uh, hopefully you'll bear with me and we can uh, pretty much stick to plan. So. Um, why don't we open up? Give us give us some um, background about yourself, just to start with. OK, um, so um, I have a master's degree, um, which I gain at a university in uh, Poland, in Lublin, uh, and I studied marketing and management. I also have an uh, engineering degree. Um, However, that's not as important as that I have the 15 years of uh, professional experience um, across different industry. And currently I worked for the international pharma pharmaceutical company. OK. Um, what's your role in that company? How do, how do you uh, participate in, in pharmaceuticals? Uh, so uh, my role is um, PMO lead. So you lead um, a PMO. OK, um, we'll come on to PMO in a moment. And I just want to think about pharma as a client organization, certainly for the construction sector. Um, in my experience, you know, when I've delivered projects to pharmaceutical companies, um, being part of the supply chain, it's been a good experience. The projects seem to have gone well. Uh, and most importantly for us, um, we were paid, uh, not just for the base scope, but also for change. So they seem to manage project scope change quite mm -hmm. well. Uh, why do you think that is? What's what's what happens with organizations like you know, client organizations like Big Pharma um, that makes the difference for uh, how projects are delivered? OK, so uh, let me start with uh, just uh, introduction to the PMO because PMO is a project management office. It's a function okay. within any organization uh, that defines the standards for project management, irrespective of what the project is and how many projects are run at the same time. So there are okay. many benefits why the large organizations usually have the PMO functions. The team are larger or smaller. However, okay. um, there are some key benefits. So the main purpose of the PMO is to make sure that the projects and programs are run smoothly in a repeatable and standardized way. So okay. uh, basically what we do, uh, we define the standards, uh, provide decision support information, although PMO does not make any decision itself. And also underpins, PMO usually underpins the project uh, delivery mechanisms to ensure that all business change within the organization is managed in a controlled way. That means when we are looking at all of the project delivery, uh, we are looking at potential risks in terms of anything, um, resources, budgets and everything else. So it's dealing with with governance of process. Yes, yes. So, management. yes. Yeah. So basically looking okay. at the most mature PMOs, 
usually we have identified key functions like governments. So in terms of the governance, PMOs are ensuring that decisions are taken by the right people and based on the right information. Uh, also, um, one of the key functions is transparency. So um, PMO is often used as a single source of truth to support decision okay. making. Also, sharing knowledge is the function where PMO uh, gather all of the information, documentation, but also sharing the best practices and create templates. So any project can be run in a similar way. New projects can be started faster and more basically the, the running of the projects can be more efficient. Um, right. also, so you get yeah. predictable outcomes as well. Yes. Presumably. Yeah. Okay. That, that, that is the way it's like we are aligning the project's um, delivery as well as reporting on resources, on the budgets, use of the budgets, um, also key value deliverable, deliverables. So basically, yeah. Uh, not all of the project's value is delivered at the end. Some of the project's value are delivered as we go on within the stages of the projects. And um, what else? Uh, basically, we PMO usually makes it or try to make it easy for project teams to do their job. That is um, basically the basic level of the PMO support within any organization. So if I recollect um, correctly, you're targeting project value, however that's delivered, whether it be through um, deliverables or not. Yes. Considering risk management, um, yeah. project governance and project delivery processes. Yes. This is this is a PMO's pulling together all those um, project management disciplines and, mm -hmm. and putting them in one so that if I'm a project manager working for a pharmaceutical company delivering any kind of project, that's my toolkit really. I can go to the PMO and find out what am I supposed to do and how am I supposed to do it to keep to the organizational expectations. Yes, and this is also the tool for the escalations. So at any point of time in one or multiple projects, um, get stuck at any stage. This is the point right. to uh, go for the escalation and basically making changes. When it's not too late. OK, so governing change, maybe it's scope, either additional scope or compromising on what the yeah. project will deliver. That's right. Um, and also maybe. managing dependencies across multiple projects. So in terms of delivering programs. Yes. OK, that's great. So it all sounds like a good idea. Um, some of my clients in my consulting business are not particularly mature. They certainly don't have a PMO or, in fact, any um, recognized standard system for managing projects. How might I go about introducing a PMO into an organization that is quite immature? Mm -hmm. So I guess you need to have a buy in from someone who makes the decision, whoever the client yeah. is, and then to sell it is basically someone needs to be accountable for the prioritization, funding and resourcing. But most of all, um, he, that person needs to be equipped in with the right information and basically okay. When you establish that the role is essential because it brings financial benefits, because it's cheaper to have everything done in the same way, because there is an economy of scale when uh, when it comes to introducing the standardization or is basically more efficient. All of the operations can be more efficient if we have standard. Uh, we don't waste time on uh, creating new ways of working every time or creating new templates which you cannot compare. So I think 
I, I think there are a lot of benefits for having the function like PMO within any organization. OK, that's that's great. I'm going to uh, certainly take your advice, try and take forward the concept of a PMO uh, to my client and the executive uh, sponsorship team there and uh, and see whether we can implement standard project delivery processes. So thanks for your time. I know you're busy. You've got lots going on uh, and I really appreciate you sharing your expertise with us. You are most welcome. Thanks. And Gabriella. good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So there we have it. The first on construction interview. Um, I hope you liked that interview. Unfortunately, it was a little bit of breakup with uh, poor internet connectivity, which hopefully I'm uh, soon going to remedy by having super high speed broadband from the 4th of February. So we'll be able to tell if, the, if there's a significant improvement after that. If you like the video, um, please hit the like uh, button below. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more interviews with industry practitioners. And also hit that bell notification so that when I produce new videos, um, you'll be notified. Thanks for watching.